Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am continuing my Shine Bright Inspiration Week featuring my brand new Shine Bright collection from Spellbinders. Today we're going to make this fun card that encourages people to shine their light wherever they go. And we're going to do some hot foiling on glitter. Yes, you can do this and I am going to show you just how I did it today. So I have two of the Disco Impressions press plates from Spellbinders and myself. This is part of the new Shine Bright collection. And I'm trimming down some of this glitter cardstock. Now this glitter cardstock is diamond glitter cardstock from the stamp market. It is so beautiful. Amy, the owner, actually told me that there's actual little pieces of silver in this, which makes this cardstock, this glitter cardstock, shine like no other. So because I love this cardstock so much and I'm running out of it, I trimmed down some small pieces so as not to waste any extra. And now I'm trimming down some silver foil from Spellbinders. I just need a big enough piece for each of these disco balls to cover the entire area and make sure that I get a perfect foiled image. Now keep in mind, these Disco Impressions press plates are versatile. You can use them with your Glimmer Hot Foil system or with your Better Press Letter Press system. I'm using them for foiling today, but just keep in mind you can use them in more than one way. Now I'm just making sure that everything lines up and I'm getting everything trimmed down to where it fits perfectly. And I'm placing the pretty side of the foil against the pretty side of the press plate. So that's something you wanna keep in mind when you're foiling, you always want the pretty side touching the pattern of your press plate. And then I'm going to add my cardstock or my glitter cardstock in this instance behind it. Then I'll take this entire thing and flip it over and lay it on to the heated up platform of my Glimmer Hot Foil system. Now, if you wanted to use some tape to kind of keep all of this in place, you can, but I'm just being a little kamikaze about it today. <laughs> So now I'm going to do the same thing with the medium size disco ball from the Disco Impressions press plate set. This also includes coordinating dies, which we'll use here in just a bit. So once I have all of my foil and my cardstock in place, I'm going to flip this over, lay it on the platform of my Glimmer Hot Foil system, and then press the timer button. Now, while that's warming up, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine, which is compatible with the Glimmer Hot Foil system. And once the timer button is complete, it will turn from flashing green to solid green. And I know I can remove my platform from the base, take it over to my Platinum 6 die cutting machine, add my shims that come with that Glimmer Hot Foil system, and then run this through my die cutting machine. Now I do have an additional cardstock shim between my two Glimmer shims because I found I needed a little more pressure, especially with this glitter cardstock. And once I've done that, you can see I have these pressed onto the glitter cardstock and watch this. The peel and reveal is so amazing. You have not only the hot foil, but you have that glitter background. Now, the only thing I probably would have done differently on this is I probably would have used a little bit of a darker silver foil on these disco balls so that there was more contrast or even a colored foil on this silver glitter background would be absolutely beautiful. But you can see I have great results. Now I'm lining up the coordinating dies that come with the Disco Impressions press plate and die set, and I'm holding them in place with a little bit of repositionable tape, and I will run these through my die cut machine. I know that glitter cardstock can be sometimes a little tricky to die cut, so if you're having problems getting through the entire glitter layer, you may want to add a shim to your die cutting sandwich for glitter cardstock. But these die cut beautifully, and you can see I have that fun foiled impression on the glitter cardstock. I mean, there's just nothing like it. And if anything was made to shine, it was these disco balls. So now I have several colors of cardstock and I am trimming down some strips of colored cardstock to add onto the oval layer that I am going to create. Now I decided to do varying widths for each of these colors of cardstock. So they range anywhere from five eighths of an inch to like three eighths of an inch. I might even have a one eighth of an inch in there, but I just kind of varied the widths so that there was a little bit of interest on them. 
And for this video, I thought it would be fun to show you how you can create some perfect spaces between these colored cardstock strips. I often show you cards that feature colored cardstock strips and they're all butt up against each other, but this time I wanted to show you how to create like a perfectly spaced gap. So I'm arranging all of these cardstock strips in the order that I think I want them. I don't want too much dark or too much light kind of at the top or the bottom. So I'm arranging my darker colors towards the center and allowing the lighter ones to be on the outside. And normally I would arrange them on my card front or my die cut piece with them all pressed together. But I decided I wanted there to be a little bit of breathing room. I'm using these nested stylish oval dies from Spellbinders to die cut some white cardstock and this will serve as the background for these colored cardstock strips and for my foiled glitter disco balls. And I'm trimming down just a 1 8 inch strip of white cardstock. This is going to act as my bumper between each of these colored cardstock strips. So I have them arranged in the order and the angle that I want them. And I'm going to start at the bottom and add the lowest strip. Then I'm going to use this white strip and I'm just holding it in place. I tried a magnet, but it got in my way when I was adhering the next strip. So I'm just going to end up holding it in place with my fingers as I work through this design. Now I am not gluing down that white cardstock strip. I'm just using it as a bumper to create that perfect 1 8 inch gap between all of these colored cardstock strips. You can see I'm working through each of these colors. I'm adding some liquid glue on the back and I'm placing that white cardstock strip at the top of each colored strip before I place the next one. And that's going to, as I said, give me that perfect gap and just kind of create a little bit of a different look using colored cardstock strips. Now, once I have all of these in place, I'm going to flip this over and use my favorite pair of scissors to trim off all of the excess here. I can keep those extra pieces for additional card projects or I can just toss them, whatever you wanna do. If you wanna be a little more frugal, you can figure out the length that you need ahead of time, but I tend to just trim them down with the pieces that I have and then just lop off the excess. <laughs> Now I wanted to add a little contrast to the edge of this glitter disco ball. So I have some mushroom ink from Concord and Ninth and I'm just adding a little ink blending around the edge just to kind of create some contrast and give it a little bit of a darker edge. A lot of times on a disco ball when you see them, the very front part is the brightest part and then you get some shadowing as the ball kind of wraps around towards the back. So I'm just kind of recreating that look here. Now, once I have that all done, I am going to wipe up my work surface and I'm also going to wipe any excess off of the surface of this glitter. So it's a very subtle effect, but I think it makes a difference in real life. Now you can see that I had some of these elements kind of created out of order. I was working on several card projects this day and so some of the footage is a little mixed up, but I am walking you through the entire creation of this card. I have the Shine Bright Sentiment. This is from the Sparkle On Press Plate Sentiment Set. And I also have the Shine Bright Sentiment Strips Press Plate Set, also from my Shine Bright collection. I'm using some silver foil to foil these onto white cardstock. And then I'm going to use the coordinating dies for each of these press plate sets to die cut the sentiment. So I have that shaped sentiment die for the Shine Bright Sentiment, and I have the strip dies for the Shine Bright Sentiment Strips. Those Shine Bright Sentiment Strips press plate set include 13 different sentiments and they're really made to be encouraging and celebratory and a little different probably from a lot of things you've seen on the market. But you can get 13 different strips from this two press plate and two die set and I think it's great to use on a variety of projects. Now I decided I wanted my disco ball to have a string, so I used some silver thread and I taped it on the back using some strong double-sided adhesive tape. And now I'm positioning my disco ball onto this oval that I've created using some foam adhesive. And I'm just going to take that thread, wrap it up around the back, and then secure it with some really strong double-sided adhesive. 
Now for my sentiment strip, this says, and leave a little sparkle. I'm adding that onto the disco ball using some foam adhesive. And for the shine bright sentiment, I actually stacked a couple of additional layers behind it. So I'm just going to use some liquid glue to adhere it on top of my disco ball. I'm just kind of tucking it underneath the edge of that sentiment strip there. Now I wanted to bring in a little additional color to this oval area. So I die cut one size larger oval from sea glass cardstock as well as citrine cardstock and I couldn't quite decide what color I wanted. I ended up going with the sea glass so I am going to adhere that down. And before I place this onto my card front, I decided I wanted to use the Sparkle Background Hot Foil Plate which is from the new Shine Bright collection and do a little foiled accent on the bottom portion of my card front. So I'm adhering my foil plate into position on my card front and I'm creating a hinge using the best ever craft tape to hold my foil plate in place. That allows me to kind of flip it up and then nestle my foil right underneath that foil plate and then flip the foil plate right back down onto the foil. Now keep in mind, I am making sure that the pretty side of my foil is facing the pretty side of my foil plate. And I do like to kind of retract back on that tape just a little bit to make sure I get the foil all the way to the top of my design. Then I'm placing this on to my Glimmer Hot Foil system and I'm allowing that to heat up. Now once it reaches full heat, I am going to set my timer button and then I will allow the timer to run through. Once that timer button stops flashing, I'm going to remove the platform from the base and run it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 system. This is going to press that hot foil onto the bottom part of my card. Now, it did cause a little bit of warping because my card was closed. And in order to prevent this in the future, I might use a top folding card design rather than a side folding card design and open up the card base before I run it through my Glimmer Hot Foil system and the Spellbinders Platinum 6 to kind of avoid that warping, but I was okay with it for now. So I'm adding my ovals together. I'm using just some tape runner adhesive to layer those up. And then I'm going to add some foam adhesive onto the back of this entire design and add it onto my A2 card base that I have hot foiled here. I did want to mention that this card base I created from some ivory card stock to give it kind of a retro feel. So that finishes off my card project today featuring some hot foiling on glitter card stock and the new Disco Impressions Hot Foil Plates from the Shine Bright collection along with other products from that same collection. This collection is now available over at Spellbinders and as always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the YouTube description. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. You can also head on over to my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com. I'll have that linked below as well. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies. Now, I just want to say thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you were inspired. I hope you enjoyed this project and this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on my notifications here so you don't miss any of my card making and video tutorials. This video is a part of a week-long celebration of my Shine Bright collection. I'm sharing lots of inspiration featuring these great new products from myself and Spellbinders, so be sure to stick around for more. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to shine bright, and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.